All right, so we talked a little bit about inverse functions in the last video, just briefly introduced them. Um, I'll just go through some notation. The inverse of a function f, uh, if we have f of x, is written like this. Uh, to find the inverse would be f to the minus 1 of x. And but however, this does not equal this does not equal uh, one over f of x. For example, we talked in the last video how um, y is equal to x squared. I'll write this down here. Y is equal to x squared um, when our domain is restricted to x values that are uh, greater than or equal to zero is a one-to-one -one function. So let's just graph this really quick. Uh, we have the point zero, zero. We have the point one, one. Uh, maybe we'd have to point two, four. And it would curve off in that direction. So let's just draw this in. Something like that. This is, uh, this is y is equal to x squared with the restricted domain. Now the inverse of y equals x squared is, actually here we'll do it in a different color, is y equals x to the one half. And if you remember back to um, the square root functions video, we, we learned how to graph this. Uh, it also went through the point one, one, and it went through the point four, two, one, two, three, four, two, and so on. It, uh, I guess we could put in 9, 3 as well. It's 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 3. So it would go up like that. And so we'll just draw this in, and we get a curve looking something like this. And this is kind of cool. What you can start seeing now is that this is half the parabola just pointing in the upward direction. And this is exactly the same half a parabola just pointing over to the right now. And so this is going back into what we were saying in the last video, where the range of a function is the domain of its inverse, and uh, same thing, the range of the inverse function is the domain of the original function. And so basically, just graphically, all that means is that, we'll just uh, take a different color here, graphically all that means is that the inverse is just a reflection of the function over the line y is equal to x. So if we draw a line here, y is equal to x, you can see all the points are just reflected over the x or over the line y is equal to x. So right here, they both of both of them have the point one one. That's on the line, so that just stays in the same place. Here we have the point four two, and if you go, uh, if you go, you know, perpendicularly across this way, we get to the point two four. And likewise, if we had followed this point nine three across to wherever it would touch, it would actually be at three nine. And so we can just leave that line over there. And right, this blue line here, was just, this was just the, the graph of y is equal to x to the 1 half. All right, so let's do one more example here about an inverse. Um, let's draw up some axis like that. There we go. All right, and so we talked a little bit before a couple of videos ago about the, the functions uh, exponential functions and logarithm functions. So if we had, uh, if we want to graph y is equal to e to the x, and we also want to graph y is equal to ln of x. And if you remember, this is just log base e of x. So we we just did this in the, a couple of videos ago, and we found that the ln of x passes through the point uh, one zero and it curves down this way and closer and closer to the line and it curves up this way with the slope gradually decreasing uh, the farther it goes that way. Another thing we learned, uh, it was a different video in the exponential functions video, that uh, all exponential functions will pass through the point zero, 1 here and it gets closer and closer to the x-axis as it goes this way and then it just shoots up this way getting steeper and steeper all right, and so this was this was the graph for y is equal to e of x, and this is the graph of y is equal to ln x. And I could have spent you know a long time filling in a bunch of points here, so you get the idea. But this is just a really rough view. You can see that these two lines 
or these two functions, sorry, are just reflected across this line right here. You know, uh, the one point that we actually know is we have the point uh, 1, 0, and when it's gone across the x, across the line y is equal to x, yeah, it's reflected as the point 0, 1 on its inverse function. And likewise, you would, you'd start to see that if we, uh, if we started drawing more lines, you know, perpendicular to y is equal to x, we start seeing that all of these points uh, are just reflected across the graph. And, you know, it's quite evident down here when they're just super close to the x-axis and then super close to the y-axis, you can kind of see that. They're all just reflections across this line.